Hi everyone, this is Phoebe from the Bugsnag team. Welcome to the third video in the series on the alerting and workflow engine. In this video, we'll cover how to customize your notifications for experiments. To continue watching more demos in the series, I'll put a link to the playlist at the end of the video. And now I'll pass it over to Yvonne, our solutions engineer. All right, so we can go ahead and get started with this next use case. And this is one that I think will be really interesting to a lot of folks. It's around experimentation, which it becomes more and more popular. And it also highlights a feature that I don't think many of you are familiar with, which is the ability to send custom metadata in the form of an array. And the reason why teams want to do that is to be able to track which experiments or which feature flags are enabled for their customers and how they're impacting stability. So since we've seen some notifications go through already and we've simulated some different use cases, I want to primarily show you how this data appears in Bugsnag and how we can create a bookmark for it and configure our integration. So again, we can assume that we're Bugsnag, we're releasing this alerting and workflow engine, and we're only introducing it to a very small subset of our users. And we want to know whenever any one of those users has a bad experience. So when I expand on an error, we'll look at this experiment tab, which is what I'm sending to capture this information. And you'll see that we have one array, which are our experiments, and that's the collection of experiments that were being run at the time of the year. And then we have this second array, and that's going to be the combination of the experiment and the variant. So what you'll see here is we have alerting workflow engine was enabled. Uh, we have also multivariant experiments, so things like button text and API version, where there can be multiple values there. And because I've gone ahead and created a custom filter for this, I can search for any one of these different values. To show you how easy it is to create a custom filter, all you have to do is hover over the database icon for any given key, and you can click on Add Custom Filter. And when you click Add Filter here, that's going to automatically re-index historical events. That's going to automatically show things in pivot tables. Uh, we do have advanced settings that you can configure, but I actually recommend going with the default in this case. So now that we know that this is searchable and what the data is formatted like, we can go and create our bookmark. So we're going to go straight to the search builder and we're going to isolate errors for the alerting and workflow engine. This will automatically pre-populate with whatever experiments that we've seen. And we can see here that this is the one that we want to focus on. So I can apply that search and I can create a bookmark for that. This is something I've already done and we've gone through how to create a bookmark. So I just made sure to share this so that it can be something that's tied to uh, an integration. And then as far as creating uh, the integration in Bugsnag, we can go to our project settings, go to the integration section, We'll go to our team notifications and you can see that I've hooked this up to a cool new feature errors channel. And from there, I can select one of these different options. In this case, because we know it's only going out to a very select few customers, we want to know any time an error occurs where this feature flag is enabled. So you can see that I'm notified every time an error occurs and use this advanced filter option to select the alerting and workflow bookmark. So this is going to ensure that our product team, the engineers who are responsible for this new feature can be listening in a Slack channel and be notified anytime this feature that they're really excited about uh, introduces problems for their customers.